Okay. Um, so I saw this movie and I was struck by its beauty. And I wondered how much of it is digital in terms of working with an intermediate, making it, painting it digitally. Well, uh, actually, I'm a very uh, analog guy. Yeah? So uh, I always want to have it as much elements made um, around me. So it's, um, I, I, I don't uh, have fun with green screen or blue screen because uh, it's kind of restrictions. So the only thing that uh, is digital in this film is the train, because I cannot ask my uh, Zhang Ji to fight uh, around this uh, moving train. So this is the only part that's digital. The rest of it basically is very analog. And what kind of cameras were you using? We're using, we're shooting this film uh, on 35 millimeters. So it's, it's really, because um, when we started this, uh, there's many like uh, films still shoot in the, on 35. But along the process, it's like we realized we may be the last few uh, using 35 millimeters shooting in China. And uh, at one point, uh, because we keep shooting, and at one point I got notes almost at the end of it uh, from Fuji Films, the one who produced uh, this. Uh, film stop for the film. And they said, dear sir, we have, uh, we're sorry to tell you that uh, this will be the last ship. That is so sad. Because uh, we are not stopped producing this uh, this film stop anymore. Now you were able to shoot at night with yeah. the 35, with that stock. Because yeah, you, exactly. you were doing very dark, yes, right. beautiful things. Yes, but I, when, once I received that, that note, it's, it's basically very, very emotional. It's like, it's almost a sign to say, well, it's time for you to stop. And also, it seems like a farewell to something which is I know for, for many, many years. So I still keep that can of the last ship. I still have one. And as, a, as, a, as a something that's a souvenir from ah. this experience. Well, have you ever filmed? Uh, I mean, you do a lot of shorts between right. your films. Right. You must experiment. And that must be part of what you're doing. What, tell me about making shorts and what kinds of experiments you do uh, with the shorts. Where are they shown? Where, where are they seen? Who, who pays for them? What are they? Well, there's uh, shorts. Like uh, today, there's a lot of projects. Like um, they, they don't want to do uh, a standard commercial. They would say, well, why don't we do make a short films? And also there's short films that I want to do. Like I remember before the handover of China, I, s I gather my crew with my family to do a documentary on that night, the handover of Hong Kong from, from the British to China. And I think uh, this is something that is uh, kind of compulsory. You just want to do to capture that moment. And most of them, so they are uh, released in film festivals and uh, a few of them are so released on, on internet. And a lot of them are documentaries, right? right? Yeah. So what does that do for you? How does it feed you as a filmmaker, creatively? I think it gives you a freedom. Because um, at a certain point, it's not about a story. It is about a moment, uh, about an image, about uh, certain observations. And, uh, and Normally, I don't like to shoot with big cameras, big crew. To do this, you will be more flexible. And it's something more personal to me. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so this movie, um, did you make a digital intermediate, though, in order to play with the colors and the, the dissolves and things like that in the editing process? No. It's, uh, it's very strange because um, we shot this film on Filmstock and last night actually we have a screening at Green Tunes uh, Cinema and this is the first time I The Beverly, you mean the new yes, Beverly? Mm -hmm. I watched this film on a 35mm print. It is very emotional because we always want to show this film in, 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 in film copies but uh, 
today it's very very hard to find cinemas to have this sequel. So it's 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 really an experience last uh, last night to watch it. I wish I'd been there. Yes, I would have right. liked to have seen it again. Yes. Um, the uh, all right. I'm it's very different when you look at. Explain it. it. It's it's you can see all these details of the black and and the layers. It is uh, so soft and and because. By incidence, my DP was also there last night. So we basically sit through the whole screening. We, we have seen this film for so many times, and so we watch it together uh, on this big screen to see the, 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 the ideal image that we want. That's wonderful. Because even on the, on the, the version that I saw, this is just so, so silly, but I, I can't help myself. There's a quality of red Mm -hmm. that um, Yi has at the end. Right. The red, I've never seen that red before. Right. Can you tell me what that red is and how you got that? I almost thought you must have done it digitally. No, I work with, uh, I, I've been working with William, my production designer, and who's responsible for not only the set, but the look, the costumes, the styling, everything. And we also, like uh, at that point of the story, we really think for a character like Gomer, she always wants to be respectable in front of people and, and actually it's almost at the end of her life. So she don't want to look sick, she don't want to look bad and she, she wants to make herself proper, but he overdo it. And that red is something that is so strong, which I think it, it gives you uh, something, a uh, very tragic feelings about that. Yes, 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 I understand. So this is your, um, all right, uh, so, so you, the quality of the um, martial arts that you researched very carefully right. and historically is very different from what I've seen in these films. And it's, it doesn't seem to be, hmm, it doesn't seem to be designed for um, action impact. Right. It seems to be designed for narrative impact. Can you, is that right? Or, or explain what might be different from your point of view. First of all, I, I, have, I don't have any uh, martial training before this film. And uh, so to prepare for, for the Grandmaster, I actually spent three years on the road across the country to interview um, many uh, Grandmasters, great masters. And one thing I find in common Actually, Chinese martial arts has so many different schools, and most of them, when we, when you sit in front of this grandmaster, maybe they are like they look very normal, seventies in their seventies or sixties. Um, when they do a demonstration, it's very different. They are different persons because the move is so perfect, so beautiful. It's because it's talking about the total balance of the body. So, this is something that I want to convey in this film because I, do, I, I don't think the film, most of the Kung Fu film before, has addressed this. Uh, there's only few uh, like uh, films from No Color has actually addressed the technique of the Southern style. And I want to, to keep that tradition. I want to present the, 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 the movement, the martial art in this film as authentic as possible. So, in a way, it's, uh, it's very, very difficult because um, we have all this master on set to be our consultant, working with Yuan Kuping. And so, when we are doing all this choreograph, they said, well, no, no, no. It's, uh, if they were that good in, that, in the picture, they won't fight for three minutes. It's all, normally, it's one punch or one kick, and, and that's it. And, it's so fast you won't be able to see it. So we have to work with them to, to during this choreograph and this uh, rehearsal to to analyze all this movement, how the feet works, the body move, and how the fists. And so it, it's very challenging, but I think that's something that I want to do because all these uh, gentlemen, they, they serve the film and they, they never ask for money. 
I think this is something that they want to, to do for their uh, school to make sure that this uh, it's uh, is well presented in a film. So I, I have I feel like I have a responsibility to make it right. So Tony Lung, um, he he. Uh I'm sure I'm pronouncing his name wrong. But yeah, you're right. <laughs> he, uh, he's, he must have felt a great responsibility to do as best as he's, he's very good, but um, that must have been hard for him. Yeah, it's, uh, we all know Tony is a very fine actor, but the problem is he never get any like uh, martial art training before this film. And uh, I, when I discussed this, this uh, project with him, because for the character of him, when we look at his pictures, when we uh, uh, study about his, um, his life story, we know he is not a typical fighter. He was brought up of, uh, in the South from a very rich family, and he was, he was well educated. And when you look at the picture, he doesn't look like a fighter. Mm -hmm. In a way, he's very elegant, mm -hmm. almost like a scholar. So it, we can't just find an action star to, to play this role. And uh, so when I discussed with him, I said, well, Tony, because I know he's a big fan of Bruce Lee, I said, I'm going to make this film about Ip Man, and I want you to be the master of Bruce Lee. He said, great. But I said, but it's not only about acting, because to play this role, I want you to do all this hand-to-hand -hand combat by yourself. That means you have to went through training. And he said, fine, it's never too late. I'm only like 47 years old. And so he went through two years of very intense training, and he even broke his arm twice during the shoot. And but I think uh, uh, he feel there's a strong responsibility to make these things right. And and basically he worked very closely with his coach, who actually learned the technique from Yip Man himself. Wow! Wow! So it's not only about the technique. He also through this uh, his his. Uh, Coach, he understand what Ip Man must look like, how he behave, how he sit, and what is his gestures. And so, he did a great job on this film. Yes, he did. Um, so, so the editing style that you used, um, how did you? What was your strategy for moving through the sequences? They look very different mm -hmm. from other choreographed. Um, I will cut that one. Me? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so we're fine. Yeah, we're fine. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll edit it. Um, how did so? How did how how did you edit these sequences? What was your strategy? Did you do it differently from from other uh, films? Would it, the way they would do it? It looks very fluid. It's uh, the process is. Um, it's, it come to me as very natural because I shoot it the way I want it to be like what we saw mm. on these pictures because this is all the moments, the details that I notice during like all these uh, demonstrations uh, during the research periods. When I look at all this uh, uh, like demonstration, I notice like the, how the feet works and why it's so good and this shoulder and, and the straight line. So this is something that I want to present. I think this is something that uh, it's my personal observations which I want to present to the audience. And th there's one thing is uh, because uh, like um, most of the audience, I, I want to, 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 to present it as um, someone who don't know martial art, anything about martial No, it's very clear. The structure of the movie is very interesting, and that's something else that I wondered. Um, if I saw a, a version of it with a narrator, mm -hmm. is that the American version? Or no. What is the difference between each of the three versions of the movie, and do you have a preference? No, it's, uh, first of all, the, we released uh, the original version of the film in China last year, and it was two hours, 20 minutes. And uh, for the uh, American version here, 
It's, uh, we have an obligation in our contract to deliver a picture within two hours. So um, normally uh, uh, our directors or producer will um, shorten some of the scenes and to, to tri take out something and to make some trims. But I, I don't want to do that because I think the original version has a, a very good balance. And I, I don't want to do a, like a watered down version. And in fact, there's many great scenes in the film, uh, of the film, which didn't make it to the original version. So um, they are bugging me. So I try to sneak in as much as possible. And, and so when I look at the original versions, I, I, th I think my approach will be, because in the original versions, there's historical background and the cultural context. It's, it's complicated. It's even complicated, difficult to some of the Chinese audience. So I have to simplify that. It's uh, by using captions to introduce the background and what exactly is the, 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 the period and what is the story is about. And because of that, I have more space to have extra scene with that. So it's, to me, it's both versions, originals and the US versions, it's something that uh, are true to my visions. I, I am responsible for it and then I'm, I'm very proud of it. And Harvey Weinstein, did he have any conversations with you at all about yeah, the version yeah. that you did? Yes, right. Because so do you respect him and you listen to him? I, I, I think uh, because uh, we know each other long enough, he's the first one who released my pictures. There's, uh, States, uh, we took an express. That's right. Yes, right. So over the years, we have many encounters. So we know each other, and I, I what I uh, feel treasure about uh, Harvey Weinstein is he's someone that really hardworking and and he cares about the film. He understands the genre. I think he's the only one that he can be an expert. Although he's run into, into trouble with the authorities in China over the years. Let me ask you about that. You're working in China now, um, as opposed to Hong Kong, as you had for, for many years. And it's you have to work within the system, and the SART system is very complex and very difficult. Was, do you find that you understand exactly what they want and what they need in terms of the limitations of what you can do? Or do you sometimes find that it's difficult to figure out? I think over the years, because we sh we have our first co-productions in China in 1994 with Ashes of Time. Which that's is like the first one, right? Yes, yeah. that's that's much, much earlier. At that point, co-production and shooting in China is, is quite new. And the industry uh, over there actually is like not very well prepared for like uh, overseas productions. But over the years, it become like a very popular in China and Hong Kong, and uh, we know like uh, the, the the census systems they have a uh, 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 very sensitive about political issues, and so besides of that, basically for today, I think uh, the, the the film bureau actually is very helpful to to help filmmakers from Hong Kong to 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 produce film in Hong in China. And because there's certain rules about religion too, aren't there? And superstition, and it's as if they're making films that can play for every single person in the entire country. The the the, the issue in China is they don't have like a rating systems. Right. So there's the films are supposed to be seen by all like age, and uh, for them there's certain things like ghost story, uh, something about superstitious is 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 forbidden. Because it is, uh, I don't. They don't think it is right for kids. But I think that will, because they are also considering uh, applying uh, rating systems. That would help. Yes. So because, I think that yeah. will be something that will be very helpful. Oh, I'm glad to hear that because the the it seems prohibitive, prohibitively difficult, especially with Western co-productions, which everyone seems to want to do. Do you find yourself being presented with a lot of those possibilities? Not really. No. <laughs> yes. <yeah. laughs> and now you did you um, 
I have so many different different questions. Um, let me just see uh, which one I'm going to go with next. Um, do you know what you're doing next? Do you do you have a sense of it? No. I think it's uh, I'm still in ninety thirty six. <laughs> it's a good place to be. Yeah, that's um, right. It's, it's, it's so beautiful, so absolutely beautiful, and and a great romance as well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, oh yeah. Uh, Zhang Yi, Zhang Yi she, are there very many women who can do what she can do with martial arts in China now? Or is she kind of a singular creature in terms of being able in to China, do the action? In, in the tradition of Chinese opera, they always define actress as like actress for like uh, very for drama and for actions. But I think Zhang Yi has a quality of both. She can play a very strong woman, and but with a very sensitive side, and that's something very special about this 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 amazing actress. And uh, I think it's very hard to find someone to play the role of Gora besides a girl, because um, basically there's certain things. Because when we are working on this film, during this process, he also went through so many difficult. And, and, and because of the training, of the weather, but you can see, like, he's, he's a very, very tough woman. She works very, very hard. So, um... Because in this film, it's not only about martial arts. She has also learned singing Chinese opera. Right. And because the, the, from the background of Gora is not a typical fighter like the big man. She's also, at that time, women are not supposed to be a fighter. So does it feel good to have a global success? This is your most successful film, is it not? I, I remember so when I'm doing the research of the film, I, I went to a small town in, in China in one freezing uh, morning because I want to interview, I have to interview a very important master over there and I find this old gentleman, he says it's uh, doing a training with his students, around 30 of them, it's outside of a train station, it's freezing cold. And, uh, and I noticed, like, the youngest of his um, students is 55. Because it's very hard for them to, to, to focus uh, before they retire. And in a way, the traditional Chinese arts, uh, martial art is not uh, supported by the states. The states prefer to, 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 to have the, uh, another kind of martial art, uh, like um, a different version of it to be like presented as sports. So in a way, it is a, it is a fading tradition, and I'm very, very happy that the film was well received um, everywhere, because I think it's, 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 it brings the awareness, I hope it brings the awareness of fading traditions. Yeah, you've been shortlisted for, for the Oscar. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, so where do you live? Where do you where do you spend most of your time? Do you live in one place? I live in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong still? Yes, right. um, and and do you work in Paris and London and New York, other places or mostly in yes, Asia? Yes, I've been shooting like uh, in many countries. I even shot um, at the, in the, the most the furthest point we can reach from I shot a film called Happy Together in Argentina in 1997. That's right, that's yeah. right. Um, okay, well, I, I really enjoyed meeting you, sir. It was a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you.